Alright, this is our Anarch deck for our Renaissance. This, um, you'll notice firstly that there is no identity here. This is because I purposefully constructed this runner deck to be playable out of any Anarch ID in the current card pool. By default, this is an Alice Merchant deck. Um, we don't really want to mess too much with deck building restrictions, so if you're a new player, don't worry too much about this. Just play this deck with the identity Alice Merchant and you'll be good. For the more seasoned players who know how to deck build, um, if you're swapping this with another identity, you will want to cut the number of cards in the deck because you want to fit the deck size, you want it to be of the minimum deck size and you want to fit the influence limit. So you will have to make the following changes if uh, you're swapping it to any other Anarch ID. In any case, um, Anarchs are all about disruption, destruction, and chaos. This is a very aggressive deck. I wouldn't say aggressive, it's a very chaotic deck that puts the Corp in terrible position because uh, they find that plans are getting thwarted at every turn of the corner. The strength of this uh, runner deck lies in the fact that they can destroy assets, upgrades, and ice with a lot more ease compared to the typical runner. Um, assets and upgrades, uh, the court will find it very difficult to res their assets and upgrades in the first place with cards like Hacktivist Meeting forcing the court to trash valuable cards from their HQ if they decide to res um, their assets or upgrades. And even when they're resed, uh, the runner can trash them very easily using Imp which allows the runner to trash cards for free. Um, finally, if the runner, if the corp is playing more ice-based decks rather than assets and upgrades, well, the ice is going to get killed by cards such as Knife, this set of cutlery that allow the runner to trash ice. Um, Anarchs are also notoriously good at breaking barriers. They have arguably the best fractor in the game in Paperclip, being very efficient at breaking barriers. Of course, this is compensated by the Anarch's susceptibility to gear check. Unlike with the other two factions, they don't have a reliable way of fetching icebreakers from their stack. As such, um, they can easily get gear checked. This is a term used to refer to the state where the runner is unable to get into the corpse remote server because they hit an end run ice that they do not have the breaker for. As such, the ice is serving as a gear check for the runner. And end around ice that say, do you have your fractor or your decoder installed? If you don't, get out. So this is a big problem for Anarx because the corp can potentially score lots of agendas before they find all their breakers as the runner. Um, even when they find all their breakers, Anarx are weak against high strength code gates. Their decoder, Black Orchestra, is very uh, expensive to use, paying three credits uh, every time they want to break subroutine. Uh, two code gate subroutines. Not to mention that there are lots of high strength code gates out there nowadays. As such, they often have to use this ability multiple times and the cost stacks up very quickly. This Anarch deck doesn't have a lot of tricks, it just has a bunch of good Anarch cards. One of the most interesting tricks however lies in the card that was imported from the Shaper faction, Test Run. This is an incredibly flexible card and very skill taxing. Uh, skill testing, I should say. It separates the good players from the very good players. So test run has a lot of uh, things it can do. Uh, one of its functions is to tutor a required breaker. Tutor refers to the act of installing, or rather fetching, a card from your stack. In this case, test run is able to tutor your icebreakers, which is a very important way to show up your weakness of not being able to fetch a uh, your icebreakers from your deck otherwise. So this allows you to come overcome gear checks. In the mid to late game, test run also serves another purpose. It allows you to reinstall programs from your bin. And this is very, um, yeah, this can be put to very good use because it allows you to trigger the when install clause on your programs again by reinstalling them from the bin and for programs such as imp this means that you can use it multiple times let me give you an example assume that um, Alice has installed their imp a long time ago and has been using the virus counters to trash their opponent's cards for free now the imp is out of power counter uh, of virus counters so Alice decides to override the imp by installing another program 
putting the imp into the bin to free up memory space. Now usually, um, this program is in the bin and is no longer usable. However, with test run, um, Alice can install the imp from the bin and now it has two power count it has two virus counters on it, allowing Alice to then in the same turn run on the opponent's servers and use these virus counters to trash cards. At the end of Alice's turn, um, according to test runs text, um, yeah, the program must be added to the top of the stack at the end of the turn, meaning that imp has to go back to the top of the stack. This is usually not a good thing since it is now uninstalled, but in the case of imp, this means that Alice can draw the imp next turn and reinstall it, gaining two more fresh virus counters, allowing her to gain so much more mileage out of the imp than just the two initial virus counters it started out with. Test Run is a very flexible card that has a lot of users and uh, it yeah, uh, it can do anything from disrupting your opponent by using lots of imp counters or it can fetch you a very key breaker that you're missing.